Chris had a point yesterday, and uh, he's pro Jalen Carter. Draft Jalen Carter, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Okay. And I'm finding myself kind of just falling in between. You're obviously pro draft Jalen Carter. Yes. And one of Chris's arguments was, and as a matter of fact, to be fair to you, Chris, because I saw you comment in, in, in a Twitter argument too. You believe the culture around uh, Jalen mm-hmm. Carter is going to correct him in his ways, right? Yeah, basically that if the Lions have built this culture of hard work, of grit, of dedication to the game, I think that that's going to that's going to do wonders for a guy like Jalen Carter. I take myself for example. I was not creating that much when I was by myself and not around a bunch of creatives. I come here, I connect with a bunch of creatives and I'm making more than I ever have in my life. And so I just believe that you your environment can drastically change you. So I, I, I'm a firm believer that, that if it's nothing too serious, that Jalen Carter can be turned around uh, turned around here in Detroit. Can I, uh, can I be honest with you? Please. And I don't, and maybe I actually I don't want to go this route because I don't, I don't want to put any like unnecessary uh, guilt or narrative towards Jalen Carter in his situation because it's not an ideal one. He, he lost a friend throughout the whole process and I, I find a hard time uh, trying to, I guess, calculate what is him falling underneath the bar and, and him going through a tough time as well. But at the same time, I've seen this story here mm-hmm. in Detroit. And matter of fact, it's, it's crazy too. The Culver Cup edibles, you guys got to try these things. Come, come see your boy, I, I promise you. That's the one thing actually you should try. Your brain's on a thousand right now. No, this was last night. I couldn't sleep, but I was oh. like, oh my God, that's brilliant. Yeah. So, uh, Yesterday, I forget whatever reason, I was watching our Jalen Carter clip, and I was talking about Dom Gatsu. I was talking about how Dom Gatsu, like worked his ass off even though he didn't show up for OTAs. And it reminded me of a former teammate of Dom Gatsu's. Uh, Chris, if you, if you show that the Spider-Man meme for this one, this, this is the story that I see or that I've seen before when it comes to Jalen Carter. And it's the one that uh, Chris didn't put in yet, but it's okay. Because I'm going to speak, I'm going to paint the picture oh. with the words. Yep. Sorry, I was looking for the original one. The pointing one? Yeah, that's oh, okay, what I was okay. looking for. I got confused. All right, and, and have this one ready because it's a national championship pitcher. So we have a defensive tackle, mm-hmm. extremely talented, gifted athletically, heavy, tall, strong, former national champion mm-hmm. at the defensive tackle position. Both Jalen Carter and Nick Fairley won national championships. Uh, both following those national championships. Yep, and then, and then the rest of the thing that was coming afterward, but don't worry, it's, it's still part of his story, right? Both dealt with legal troubles with, with their vehicles as well, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if I sent that one, too, but Nick Fairley arrested multiple times. Yep. Some as a Detroit Lion, too. Uh, I didn't send you this one because I just screenshot it, too, but, but coming in, gaining weight. Matter of fact, exactly 10 pounds. At one time, Nick Fairley was mocked to go number one and two of the 2011 uh, NFL draft. Uh, also, we ended up falling to 13. But you, you, you can't tell me you can't draw that same parallel to Jalen Carter right now. Character issues, uh, dealing with cars, yeah. former national champion, extremely like, talented. Is he willing to put in the work? I don't know. And, and then to Chris's point, he thought the culture is what's going to turn that around. Mm-hmm. Having Aiden Hutchinson there and him naturally wanting to compete. Do you know what's the defensive line rookie that Aiden Hutchinson has been compared to this past season in terms of like, numbers? He even got a shout-out from this guy. He's my, one of my favorite players, fellow light skin. It's not Dominican Sue. Dominican Sue, monster defensive lineman. Aiden Hutchinson got compared to him? Yeah, his rookie numbers. He's the only, only rookie to put up those. Uh, I forget the exact stat, but the only comparison, the only guy next to it was in Dominican Sue. But nonetheless, that would have been Nick Fairley's competition, right? That would have been the guy he was bred to compete against at mm-hmm. the same exact position, even. They were supposed to be dogs together. That never turned Nick Fairley around. Nick Fairley still struggled. You think the culture that was established back then is the same as the culture of the Detroit Lions right now? Yeah, I the, think there's a vast difference. No, I, I, no, no, no. I, 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 I say the difference is probably yeah, in the front office, correct? Yeah, and yes. coaching within the football and the field. entire coaching team and the entire coaching staff. No, the coaching staff that was a great culture. I, I've friends again, Glover Quinn speak with him multiple times. Darius Slay, Glover Quinn came here because of that culture. Reggie Bush came here because of that culture. Like, guys guys were coming here to Detroit to compete and to win. Yeah. Like, the restore of the roar with Jim Schwartz, like, that's the closest simulated to Dan Campbell in terms of, like, our lifetimes, at least, thinking of the line coaches. Jim Schwartz had some spunk to him. Jim Schwartz had that fucking, like, that grit to him. Remember the Jimmy Handshake yeah, game? Yeah, that was the Jim dumbest Harbaugh? shit I've ever seen. For sure. But there was, there was culture there. There were dogs. They made the playoffs. 
The only person to make the playoffs after that was Jim Caldwell. But, and he took them from fucking the, the bad lines to that. I, don't, I, I just get nervous because I, I've literally seen this same exact fucking story. Yeah. There's just way too many similarities between these two right now to think that, like, I guess to give him the, the, the beneficiary or, or the – what's it? Something like doubt. Benefit of the doubt. Benefit of the doubt. Thank you. That's what I'm looking for. And that's my, that's my history lesson for Chris. Everything similar. Everything. Championships. Cars. Overweight. Not being in shape. I mean, Spinny, and I'm not even asking you to, like, you don't have to, like, vault it in terms of, like, defending Jalen Carter, but just for Chris to, to see, like, the how, how similar. T- tell me this shit's not, like, eerily similar. It is similar. It is similar, for sure. I think Jalen Carter's a better prospect than Nick Fairley was. And I think the Lions culture is stronger now than it was then, personally. With the staff of coaches that they have around them, not just Jim Schwartz. I think Dan Campbell built a, a better culture than Jim Schwartz. I think Dan Campbell has surrounded his players with coaching staff and guys like Aaron Glenn and different players like that that will help people succeed. It is similar when you look at it apples to apples. But I just think that if there is one place that Jaylen, you could expect Jalen Carter to turn it around or, or do something like that, and and I don't even know turn it around like – Nick Fairley got arrested for, for drug possession, right? Uh, he it was, got, well, he had, it was weed. It was weed. So this is how eerily similar it is, right? Weed and DUI, when the police came, guess who tried eluding the police? Yeah. And fleeing the scene? Nick Fairley. Guess who's literally their misdemeanor is fleeing the scene? Well, his misdemeanor, his Carter. misdemeanor was drag racing and reckless driving. There was something with um, those were his two counts that he played. There was something there too no with uh, yeah, yeah, because he played no contest today, yeah. yeah, officially. But there was the uh, obstruction, obstruction, obstruction of justice too. That's when you it, it was, interfere he lied, with he like lied legitimate to the stuff. Officer. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. so you interfere with like the legitimacy of like an investigation, yeah. so you can find like the actual truth and stuff like that. But like eerily similar. And I'm getting a little nervous too. Like, and it, hear me out. I'm still down with with drafting him. At this point, though. I don't know if it has to be at six. He's not making it into eighteen. I I'm not saying eighteen, but I mean you saw the way the mock draft fell yesterday when when you restart we both restarted. I was like, fuck. Mm-hmm. Carter has to fall, Carter has to fall. It's ugly when you get there at six when you realize you did address the cornerback position. It's ugly when you get there at six and you're like, I feel like I can still get Carter later, a little later. How late? What nine? I mean Vegas is gonna want to move up. Yeah, eight. Nine, nine is the, the Bears. I don't know if the Bears are in the position to take on The Bears that. aren't going to trade with the Lions. No, they're definitely not going to trade with the Lions. Although the, the Lions did prob- trade with the Vikings. The Bears would probably take Jalen Carter if he fell to him. I don't even know about that anymore either. Just because, like, what established veteran leadership do they have in their locker room? That's true. To handle something like that. It barely Doesn't again, mean they don't take the swing. Once upon a time, was it projected as the number one to number two overall pick. And he fell all the way to 13th. And I, I just feel like this is the same type of situation we're getting with Jalen Carter. But again, I'm cool with taking him. I just don't know at six anymore. I, I, I don't know. JB, you got anything on this one? Uh, I don't know about trading back because all you have is, what, the Raiders in Atlanta? Unless Atlanta wants to try and jump up and maybe potentially grab a Will Levis. Or I don't even know what quarterbacks will be left at that point in time. But still... I don't know if you have that opportunity again for let him drop all the way to 18 because I, I don't think he's going to be there. The Bears are already looking like they could be potentially something in the next one or two years. So it's just I don't know if you jump and take that opportunity and just let him slip out of at six. There's there's one thing to have the legal troubles. I I, I can get down with that. We we've been well documented and, and then on wax about like give us the the dirtiest, nastiest savages you can get. That we could put it legally within the <laughs> defensive unit and, and let them hit the field. I'm all for that. I had no. You guys sat. You guys are watching me right now. Sat here, watch me defend him when the, all this stuff went down. Mm-hmm. But what's different about this one is the similarity to like the I don't want to call it lazy, but the ten pounds in two weeks. The combine was two weeks ago. The guy's going through the most stressful period of his life right now by far. It's just like Dan Campbell. What they love, they love football guys. They love to compete. Like if if. If you love football, that's like a little bit of your escape, right? Competing to go and perform well. Your your pro day. By the way, your pro day is like where you look the best. Yeah. That's where we find like all these 40 times like, oh, he broke the 40-time record. Mm-hmm. And you're like, 
cat. Because it's a pro day. It's, yeah. it's their coaches helping each other out. And even if that's not the case, is it possible the coach is going hard at him because Jalen Carter probably big homie to him or you know what I'm saying because he's been a stud and star is his but also whole like career, what does it say career? about Jalen? Like who knows what shape they're in better than this is what Neil said, which made sense. Like who knows what shape they're in better than Jalen Carter? He didn't have to show up to the pro day. If he knew he was gonna look bad, if he knew he was ten pounds overweight, no, if he, knew he, he had to be... show up to the pro day. No, you don't. Yes, he did. Following the news that came Says out and, and not working out at, at the combine. Yeah, you could just say no if he knows he's in worse shape. That's gonna hurt your stock more. More than more than being ten pounds overweight and not being able to complete your drills. I don't think so. Fair. I don't know. I mean, that, that's that's a hypothetical, but what does that mean? It means he he was trying to do something. He was trying to get his mind off of everything, trying to at least compete and show what he has. Well, if that's what he was trying, and that was the performance he gave, trying, that's not a good sign. Like I said, bro, the guy's going through some shit right now. This feels like y'all making excuses for my man. Again, what, very talented. what else can you say about it? What do you mean what else can oh, I say Oh, he just about doesn't it? care. He's giving up. It's over. That, that, is that what you honestly believe? That he just doesn't give a fuck about football anymore? He doesn't care where he's going to get drafted. He just gained 10 pounds. He's, sa- he's mailing it in. Doesn't care. Is that what you believe about him? I believe a shade of that. I'm not going like the, all, everything you just said, but like I would love to see him if he's truly passionate about Like uh, me, I, I've escaped to my passions. That's that's what we do. I think that's what we all do. You know, that, that's, our, that's why we enjoy doing that shit. It lets our mind roam free and we're just focused on like what we're doing in that moment granted working out isn't that fucking fun that's not the same as playing a football game that's Allen Iverson practice yeah we talking about practice <laughs> you know what I'm saying like, and, and, and like there is some of that there too but I'm just saying if I'm drawing similarities to situations situations that's already happened here in Detroit especially with Nick Fairley I've I've seen this story and it just makes me a little bit hesitant yeah at least at six at least at six because that's still a spot you can trade back on